Oh, good morning, everybody. 10 a.m. on Thursday, September the 17th, 2020. We finish the book of 2 Timothy today. This is the last epistle written by the Apostle Paul. We'll see as it wraps up how that is so. But I'm glad that you've been with us. Uh, we will cover the book of Titus starting tomorrow and then Saturday and Sunday, and then Monday, back to the Old Testament again. Be sure to comment in the comment section what book you'd be interested in going to next in the Old Testament. So, 2 Timothy chapter 4, turn your Bibles there with me. We will pray and jump right in. Father, we love you and we're thankful for this book, what it teaches us for these pastoral epistles gives a little bit of insight as to the leadership of the church and what we ought to be doing, and it helps those who are following leadership to know what kind of leadership they should be looking for and uh, put submit themselves under. I pray that you'd help us to fulfill our proper roles. In Christ's name we ask, amen. All right, verse number one, 2 Timothy chapter number four. Here we go. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Pause. I know we're mid-thought here, but Paul is stressing the importance of what he's about to say. Pardon me. He says, I charge thee, therefore. That's a, not, not just a suggestion. Hey, I might suggest this. He's saying, no, I challenge you. I charge you, you must do this. And I'm charging you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is no light uh, recommendation. This is Paul saying, this is what you must do, Timothy. And then he says of Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Meaning, you're going to stand before Christ and give an answer for how you handled what I just told you to do. Verse number two, here we go. This is the charge. Preach the word. Notice he's told what to do and what to do it with. Preach the, preach the word. Not, don't preach your opinions. Don't preach politics. Don't preach, uh, you know, whims. And we'll find here as we go on. Don't preach what the people want to hear. Preach the word. Then he's further instructed. Be instant, in season, out of season. That means to, to be aggressive, to be pushing forward, to be excited and, and, and zealous. Be instant, in season, out of season. Be zealous when you feel like it. Be zealous when you don't feel like it. Be zealous when people are responding positively. Be zealous when they're not responding positively. Be zealous and instant when you're encouraged. Be instant when you're discouraged. Always be about the work of the Lord, no matter how it's turning out. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So to reprove means to correct. If you're going the wrong direction, hey, come back over this way. Rebuke means to sharply, uh, ah, what's the word I want to use? I don't want to say criticize, rebuke, uh, to sharply correct. I know I hate to define uh, two different words with the same definition because there is a slight difference. Reprove means get back on course. Rebuke means to sharply uh, discipline, maybe you could use that. Then exhort means to encourage. So isn't it interesting? We, we correct with the word of God. We discipline with the word of God. And then we encourage with the word of God with all long suffering and doctrine. So be patient with people. It takes time and use the doctrine of the word of God to do these things. Verse three, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. We're going to find a time when God's people are not interested in hearing the truth of the word of God. They'd rather have people tell them what they want to hear. They'd rather have people preach to them according to their own lusts. They'll even change the word of God in an effort to appease the people and please them. Verse number four, and they shall turn their ears away from the truth 
and be turned unto fables. So the further you get away from the truth, the more likely you are to start looking at at fables, at false teaching, false doctrine. And we see that happening in our country. The most popular preachers in our country are false teachers. And they're, they're multimillionaires. They are loaded to the gills with money and followers. They have book deals. They're on television. There's no end to their, their ministries because, and we use that term ministry loosely, because people would rather hear that than the truth. You understand? Verse number five. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So this is the final uh, push that Paul's giving as he's telling Timothy how to lead his ministry, how to run his ministry. Watch thou in all things. So be aware of what's going on around you. Be attentive. Know the landscape. Know the lay of the land. What's happening uh, around you and in your community and with your people. Be vigilant. Next, endure afflictions. You know, hard times are going to come. Life is full of hard times. Don't uh, shrink from your responsibility because of difficult times. Do the work of an evangelist. Never stop being a soul winner. Always be out there trying to preach the gospel and win souls to Christ. Make full proof of thy ministry. In other words, give it all you've got. Take advantage of everything you can possibly do to serve God. Verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul knows that he's about to die. He knows that his life is soon to be over, hence his ministry will soon be over. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So he says, you know what? I've done all that I can possibly do, and now I'm, I'm getting ready to, to leave. Henceforth, because I fought a good fight, because I finished my course, because I've kept the faith, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So there's a crown of righteousness given to people who rejoice at the coming of the Lord, I rejoice to be able to see the Lord face to face. So that's a crown that you and I can earn as well. If we love the appearing of the Lord, we'll earn the crown of righteousness. Verse 9, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. So Paul's asking Timothy to come visit him. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. So Paul's saying, you know, the guys that were helping me and the guys that were working with me and serving me, they're, they're no longer here. One of them, Demas, has forsaken me. We preached on this about a month or two ago. Uh, there are three times in the Bible Demas is mentioned. One, he's just mentioned by name. Two, he's mentioned as sending greetings to a certain church. And then thirdly is here, Demas hath forsaken me. Why did Demas leave Paul? He loved this present world. There are some who are just so in love with earth and, and life on earth and this life and this world, they will forsake the will of God and the work of God. So we just have to understand that. It's, it's part of the deal. You're going to see people that are in your church that aren't going to stay there very long. They love this world too much. They're going to forsake the church. They're going to forsake you. They'll forsake your pastor and they will depart because they love this present world. Next, verse 11, only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Now, this is the Mark that's John Mark in the book of Acts. If you remember, Paul and Barnabas went on a missionary journey, and they took John Mark with them. Halfway through the trip, John Mark decides he wants to go back home, and so he leaves them in a lurch, uh, while they're on the field, and he goes back home. The next time they were going to go out, Barnabas says to Paul, hey, let's bring John Mark again. Paul says, I'm not bringing that kid. He departed from us last time. I'm not going to do that again. And uh, Barnabas, they fought. 
in fact, Paul and Barnabas split up that way. So Barnabas took John Mark, Paul takes Silas, and now two missionary teams are formed. So God still gets the glory, and it works together for his work, even this fight between Paul and Barnabas. Well, now, look here. Paul wants Mark around. He's asking him to come. So Paul has had a change of heart. It's also shown that John Mark has grown. He's no longer this immature little guy that's going to run off, you see. So we should never give up on people. We ought to always keep investing in them, keep loving them, keep serving them, so that uh, we can see them grow in due time. Next, Antichicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. So Paul asked Timothy to bring three things. Number one, a cloak, because winter's coming. Bring my winter coat, please. Secondly, bring the books. And then thirdly, most important, the parchments. I don't know the difference between the books and the parchments. Some say the parchments were Paul's writings to his churches. And so he wanted those with him. Verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. So he's warned of Alexander the coppersmith. He's told to uh, that he hurt Paul's ministry and to beware, because he may try to hurt Timothy's ministry as well. Verse 16, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. We've seen this before with Stephen, when he stoned, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. We saw it from Jesus. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Godly Christians do not wish ill upon their enemies. All men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. He's saying, God, please don't hold them accountable for their actions. Verse 17, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Boy, and isn't that key? We sometimes look for people. I need people. I need, I need my people around me. I need my people to help. I need my, my, my people, my family, my friends, my acquaintances. I need them. I need them. We see here, they're not always going to be there. They're not always going to be around, but the Lord will stand with you. Let's seek to get more confidence in the Lord than in humans that may be in our life. Next, the Lord stood by me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He says, God's taken care of me this far. He will continue to take care of me. And by the way, that's my story. God's taken care of me this far. He will continue to take care of me. God's taken care of you this far. He will continue to take care of you. Verse 19. Salute Priscilla, uh, Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Do thy diligence to come before winter. Eubulus greeteth thee, and Pudens, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. That's it. That's Second Timothy. Can you imagine being Timothy and receiving this letter from Paul? and how personal that must have been. Boy, I hope that you've enjoyed First and Second Timothy. Titus, tomorrow, one, uh, tomorrow, chapter two on Saturday, chapter three on Sunday. Monday, back to the Old Testament. 
Put in the comments an Old Testament book you'd like me to do. Uh, maybe you want us to continue on with Exodus since we did Genesis. There's 40 chapters there. Maybe you want to jump somewhere else. Just put your suggestion in the comment and I'll pray about it and consider where we're going to head after that. But thanks for tuning in this morning. Oh man, short day today, 14 and a half minutes. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Like, love, share the post, and let's see what happens and what God does with it. Amen. Happy Thursday. Soul winning bus tonight, 7 o'clock, Lighthouse Baptist Church. If you can come, please join us. We'll have a great time. God bless you. Happy Thursday.